Welcome along, boys and girls. Today's little task is <laughs> not weighing out tonight's cocaine, um, but knocking a water profile together for something similar to a Heady Topper clone. And again, I'm back with kind of not really being overly confident with the water profile. Um, if you um, if you have a look at the two um, that you get from Beersmith, the first here is their Burton profile, and this is their Burton Power profile. So this is the one I'm going with, which is two and a half grams of um, gypsum, calcium sulfate, um, no Epsom salts in this one. Very high ratio calcium chloride and then baking powder 22.1 grams now that's the profile that I used for the flower child uh, which has turned out very very good uh, so we're gonna see still not overly confident I think I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to start getting my head around these water profiles a bit more Right, let's go and chuck this in the HLT. I'm not quite up to me 48 litres yet, but I am circulating through the pump back up and into here in order to keep a constant and even temperature and also to mix this in. I will give this a stir as well. a lot of baking powder I don't know I'm still kind of a little bit ambivalent about this but we will see right, I'm gonna let that circulate um, up to 48 I'm gonna give it a bit of a mix and then start mashing in this is a fairly hefty grain bill going on here uh, we've got 6.8 kilos of um, Golden Promise, PAL Golden Promise and uh, 170 grams of Cara Vienna now that brings this up to nearly 7 kilos I'm going to try and dough in at around 14 litres I've got a sneaky suspicion I might need a little bit more but I'm going to slowly start adding this to the mash tun. There's no prizes for speed when it comes to doughing in. It needed <laughs> another another litre just to make it move a bit. Um, now we haven't got any dough balls in there so that's good. I'm going to give it a good little stir. I've had to run it through the herms because apparently my strike temp was a little bit out so I'm just bringing it up to 67 then we'll give it an hour and then probably about a 45 minute sparge good mm. a bit worried about getting the um, in the pH down in the mash I've just chucked some lactic acid in there I'm going to have to wait for it to recirc a little bit, I think, before I can work out whether or not this is actually on the um, PID at the moment. The pH isn't kind of like linear. Adding a teaspoonful of lactic acid to bring it down a certain amount, adding another teaspoonful won't bring it down necessarily a certain amount. So, there'll be a bit of guesswork going on here. Just cooling this latest sample down in here. These are really good little thing. I can't remember where they came from. Home bargains or B&M or something. But one jug slots nicely on top of another. So you can sit it in an ice bath to cool the sample down. So let's have a little look. I've got a horrible feeling. This is... Oh. 
yeah that's still still a bit warm I think but temperature compensated it needs to come down a little bit more for my liking lovely and that is temperature compensated because it's a very expensive pH meter <laughs> I will check it again when the temperature drops down just to make sure the compensation's right but 5.2 that's good enough for me just taking another sample out from the HLT I'm going to drop the pH of that ready for sparging in 47 minutes time for a coffee I think good good we seem to have a perfect conversion oh, it's the first time for everything Hi, right, I'm going to do a vol oft. So all this is doing now is drawing from the bottom of the grain bed and literally just recirculating it through the pump and through the sight glass. And what we want to see in there is a little clarity. <laughs> well. Not as clarity as clarity, but clarity as in no bits of grain. And I can't see any bits of grain. So I'm gonna call that a result. I'm gonna give that another, another five minutes or so. And all that's doing now is just allowing the grain bed to become the filter. And then what I'll do is from here, we will go through Mr. Heath Robinson filter into the whirlpool in of the kettle and then the HLT will go through the Herms coil to flush the Herms coil out and then through the sight glass and then through the wherever I've put it it's probably here somewhere here we are the little sparge ball this isn't the best and I thought about putting it upside down and whatever but until I make a proper kind of like little spargy spreader plate that'll have to do all right back when we're almost ready to start as sparging literally just a trickle coming through and that is without the pump that's just gravity siphoning from here ever so gently into here so so gently um, uh, as to it's a bit windy out there as to not really disturb the grain bed too much and um, once that goes down a little bit I'll start this in pretty much exactly the same way just very very lightly spraying until I get the kettle up to about 28 maybe 30 litres um, but the sparge for this is going to be about I reckon 45 minutes very very gentle 30 45 minutes something like that but before then we're just going to let it ever so gently transfer through it won't actually suck right off the bottom of the grain bed we'll probably end up kind of like with about this much here and this much here um, but it's purely just so that we don't compress that grain bed too much or we will end up with a stuck sparge well, while that's um, doing its ting, I'm going to get me, uh, me hops ready. We're going to start off with half an ounce, 14 gram Magnum at 16, sorry, 60 minutes. Then halfway through, an ounce or 28 grams of Simcoe. Now, I've got hops spread across three different freezers. So I've managed to find, I think there's some Magnum which needs using up that's from dark farm that was crikey i might have to just check that make sure it's all still still smells all right but i don't know 
2018 probably still be alright I'm gonna have a whiff anyway I'm very happy <laughs> to confirm that these stink like fuck god yes so still as fresh as the day I resealed them so 14 of those ready to go in at 60 minutes Yeah, not the most scientific of um, sparging techniques, but it, it kind of works. Uh, we have a bit of a problem, um, or could have a bit of a problem. Not insurmountable, but um, I thought I had 80 grams of Apollo hot pellets somewhere, and they seem to have gone missing. So it's probably me who's not um, made the right entry in the spreadsheet or I've just lost them, that's also possible, uh, but I can substitute them I think for Columbus, might be wrong, might need to check that. Whee! We've got a boil, hot break over and done with and that scummy stuff, I don't know what, what you call that scummy stuff, I just tend to call it uh, scummy stuff, um, is now out of way. And we start off with 14 grams of magnum at 60 minutes. Here we go. And they do stink. So, yeah, four marks dark farm. Although they probably bought them in from somewhere else and repackaged them. It doesn't really matter to me. Right. Oh, <laughs> wrong button. Never mind. We've got a 61 minute boil. Not sure it'll matter right much um, and we should have finished up with just about 24 litres I should imagine right good all looking pretty funky um, rather embarrassingly what uh, what turned out to be a hunt through all of the freezers to find uh, the Apollo the Apollo. I'd already got it out of the freezer and put it in my bucket with the other hops. What a muppet. I don't know sometimes you know I think there might be might be issues developing with my memory and at other times I just think I might have issues with my memory. I don't know but then of course it could be my memory. I don't usually joke about things like that but being such a twat, having taken a packet of Apollo out of the freezer and then forgotten about it 15 minutes later, I think that uh, I think that justifies me making a little bit of a a little bit of a joke about my own my own memory failings here. Oh, no, it's not a bad day outside. We've got another bit gusty, as it were, um, but a um, bit of sunshine. We've got a weed weed hatch cover which uh, we're in the process of cleaning it all up. Ready to go back in there. Yes, all right, Delilah, darling. We are on track for a sort of heady topper clone, but I'm still, and, and this is a, I don't want to bang on about this, still not, uh, not certain about the water profile here. Right, I'm gonna do a, a pre-boil gravity reading now that that's cooled down and bung that very quickly back in the boil and then we'll be back for the next stop edition or I might just skip that because it makes for a bit of a boring video I don't know I'll come back when there's something more interesting I've just taken my little Heath Robinson filter assembly apart this is what goes between the mash tun and the kettle and it's to catch any bits of grain that manage to come through and it's remarkably clear. So the ultra slow sparge creating a nice filter of the grain bed seems to have been very, very successful. And now in a little while we're going to feed this to fishes because they love it. So, um, 
last week, probably about this time last week, I don't know, what day is it? No, it's last Monday, it doesn't matter what day it was anyway, when we was away on the boat and uh, visited Chris Harrison down at Harrison's Brewery and um, he can generate half a tonne of spent grain a week. Uh, I think we'd have the fattest carp in any canal if we was to feed that amount to our fishies. But they don't half love it. 30 minute addition, which is 28 grams or an ounce of Simcoe. And this is counter to the, the standard idea that with New England IPAs where you just don't have any um, hot side hop additions. So we had 14 and now 28. Um, and then there's a massive amount goes in uh, at flame out for a hop stand of 30 minutes. So we've got an ounce of Cascade, an ounce of Simcoe, and an ounce of Centennial, and half an ounce of Columbus, and half an ounce of Apollo. Now this recipe also calls for, at 10 minutes, 450 grams of brown sugar. I suppose that's how they boost the, uh, boost the alcohol content up to being, a, I think it's seven, seven and a half percent. Not sure I want to chuck that much sugar in. I wonder if it really adds to the flavour or not. Mind you, it will, yeah, because there's, there's quite a lot of bittering with those hop additions. Maybe it just takes the edge off the bittering. I don't know. I'm so unexpert at this. But we'll see. I'll weigh some sugar out anyway, shall I? All right, I'm putting 380 grams in instead of 450 because that's what I've got. And it's a mixture of light brown and dark brown. Oh well, fuck it. Who knows, it might work. First for everything, I guess. I've never chucked that much, just like sugar, into any recipe before. Oh, bloody hell. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? Fortunately, a little splash, no harm done. Very strange. Right, keep giving that a stir, I think, off camera. That smell is awesome, <laughs> absolutely awesome. Right, we are there, we have an hour. We have done an hour and then we're gonna do 30 minutes. Oh, by the way, cheap kitchen timers. <sighs> Waste of fucking money. As long as they time. I'm doing it on my watch anyway. So we can turn this off. That is it now. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes just to drop down a titch on the temperature. I did think about chilling it down to 80 degrees, but the recipe doesn't actually suggest that. So trying to be um, <laughs> a little bit true to the recipe. Actually, I haven't done bad. Didn't need to substitute the Apollo hops. Uh, I'm just going to let it drop a titch, probably down to sort of like around, well, it probably won't take long to get down to about 92, 93. Um, and then, I mean, it's dropping quite quickly now, look. Oh, it was. Thank you. Um, you do it when I'm not looking. Uh, and then chuck in this four ounces of mixed hops and see how that smells. What a beautiful day this has turned out to be. And a lot of people are now going to think whenever I make a video, it turns out to be a nice day. So I'm available to come and make a video at your wedding if you want. It'll be shit, but you might get good weather. Well, obviously after COVID, post COVID, I'm not doing any weddings or anything or bar mitzvahs or anything like that until the end of COVID. In fact, I'm hardly going out. I'm only going to places that I trust. Um, so if I've been to your place recently, it means I, it means I trust you. Oh, get me. 
with my boundaries of trust. All right, give that a couple of minutes and chuck us ops in. I think we're down to almost 96. And the only reason I'm bunging these in now is because it's exactly half past three. So I'm going to give them a stir and I shall know then that four o'clock we'll have had a, a nice 30 minute hop stand. Oh, oh, the smell, the smell, it drives me crazy. So it does. What was actually, yeah, 95-ish, 95.4. That's Radio 1, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, right, give that 30 minutes. And uh, I suppose I'd better um, sterilise, not sterilise, sanitise, because I'm not going to boil a plastic fermenter. Um, yeah, better get star sanding a fermenter. I was worried that this basket was going to clog up again as it did last time but it seems to have drained quite well and the whole siphon down through the pump up through here through the plate chiller and into the fermentation bucket is purely going by gravity at the moment I haven't uh, haven't needed to turn on the pump at all. You can probably hear a little hum. And that's the 12 volt transformer in here. <sighs> Another Amazon fail. Uh, I think it's the fan. But while it's still working, well, you know. The problem is with the demise of, sort of like the likes of Maplin and in Sheffield we had a wonderful um, little independent electronic shop a little bit like 625 aerials in Brighton I guess um, we had a, a place called NR Bardwells which I'd used for the 30 odd years and interestingly when this place the boathouse came up on the market two of the other lots in this same auction I bought this outside of the auction not didn't wait to the auction I, I bought it directly off the owner before but two of the other lots in the auction one was the Abbeydale picture house and the other was uh, NR Bardwells and a friend of mine at the time Kenroy uh, said to me shall we have them uh, shall we have the picture house and convert it into a community centre and flats and we looked at it and we we also looked at buying in our Bardwells just so that they could carry on trading in, in, in there as they always have done. Unfortunately, we didn't and they ended up getting turfed out. And then, strangely enough, Severia, uh, who some might remember from Dino's restaurant and a few other restaurants, um, rented the property and made it into a nice little restaurant but couldn't get a licence, so moved out. A little bit of history that you probably... Not really overly interested in but uh yes yeah, so right anyway the problem with not having little independence or someone like maplin is that you're stuck with buying shit off amazon or ebay not knowing what it is with no fucking quality control or you have to go to places like rs components which actually no i say or you have to you know that's probably not a bad option going to rs components because they have really upped their game and they're pretty hot Okay, right, I'm going to finish off doing this transfer and then we're going to go into FE4, Fermentation Fridge 4. Um, and uh, I will chuck the yeast in. Made a huge yeast starter. I don't think you can overdo yeast. I did ask an expert the other day and he concurred. That's about where I wanted it to be. Okay, this is my little yeast starter. <laughs> Say little, it's the Amiga um, OYLO 52, and I've got another Conan yeast um, that was sent over from um, uh, crumbs, Lorne, Lor, Lor, Lauren Cooper. Sorry, <laughs> seems like it's been a long afternoon. 
Uh, it's now half past four. It's from Lauren Cooper. Um, but I want you to... I want you to experiment with all these different so-called Conan yeasts. So I made this massive starter and then decanted all of the rest of it off. It was up to here. So I decanted all of it off the base and this is what's left. So let's get this pitched. Hang on, I'm going to have to do this with two hands and I won't be a sec. Right, that's in, that's in, that's in. So we have a... Um, a sort of, to the recipe anyway, a sort of almost clone of Heady Topper. And with that one litre I've just chucked in there, we're almost up to 23 litres. I'm going to guess by the time we've finished, I'm going to get 19 out of here. Um, because we this stays in here until the fermentation. Oh, I know what I haven't done. I know what I haven't done. Oh, 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 oh silly old me. I took a post boil gravity reading, which was well over actually. My brew house efficiency has improved significantly and I've overshot. Um, but, well, there's one more thing I need to do. Very important. Get my hand in here for a second. Star sand. Float hydrometer. I've put a video up about this previously. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful little tool. So that goes in there. I'll seal that when I've finished filming. And uh, then start the measurement. Crikey, that did have smell amazing already. Ho oh, ho, right, back soon. This is day, f day 15, day 15. And... It smells outstanding. Now let's try and get these hops in really quickly. That's 28 grams each of Apollo Simcoe. Come on. And Chinook. I think that lid's on. So now they go in for seven days. In the recipe, it says to wait until this is down at final gravity. Well, it's somewhere around 15 at the moment. And I have been checking it daily on the float hydrometer. I haven't drawn any off. I really should have done, but I'm going to trust the float on this. Because even if its float isn't totally accurate, it's probably accurate relevant to its own measurements, if that makes sense. So I'm going to say this has almost reached the end of fermentation. Um, I pop this in uh, and leave it at its current temperature for a day, and then I'm going to gradually start, just kind of like drop it down to 14. Seven days, and then it needs Centennial and Simcoe, I think 35 grams of each for another three days but you've got to take it off the yeast cake first so I'll be decanting it um, into a, another clean bucket filled with CO2 and then you add the final hop additions for five days and then I'm going to give it four days serious cold crash and then keg so it's, um, it's another one of those slightly more complex brews but we shall see how it turns out, hopefully, not a billion miles away from Heady Topper. What I did four, five days, six days ago was, what day is it today? I don't know, it's irrelevant anyway. It was six days ago. I decanted it into another clean fermentation vessel, uh, which I'd flushed out with CO2 and then pumped some CO2 into the top of the other one. So yeah, anyway. Transferred it all to this. There was quite a lot of wastage. I don't know if you can see, but I think we've only probably got about 19 litres in there. So we got a keg out of it anyway. Next time I would probably do it slightly differently. However, you know, it is what it is. God, I hate that term. Anyway. <laughs> Decanted five days with the last, the second lot of dry hops, because it's double dry hopped. 
first lot was in for seven days then decant this off the hop bed and the trub bed into a clean fermentation vessel second lot of dry hops and today is the day i'm going to take it into the keg over there uh, which is currently sat with star sand in it in it um so this is one degree in here now cold crashed i'm going to uh empty that with uh into another keg because that's where i store my star sand and then fill that full of co2 and then filter this out through the um mac daddy filter which is currently sat in star sand in another bucket use lots of star sand here um into the keg uh, seal it burp it and then probably chuck it in the keezer don't know but i am going to even though i'm putting it in a keg i'm going to fill about four cans and then just with a little bit of priming sugar and then seal the cans up put them away and if they work i'm going to send one over to uh um, and next time I do the flower child, I'm going to be sending a can of that over to Will Myers. I've had reasonable success with the canning, although it is a single seamer, but not not bad success rate. So, yes, let's get this into the keg. Ooh, the little murky depths of the corny keg. And... Here's something that I thought I ought to explain. It looks like this is now coming out of the Mac Daddy and then just only partly filling this tube, which is true. But it's not actually oxidizing because I did flush all this through with CO2 before um, starting the transfer. So all that was in here was CO2. So this is only coming into contact with co2 and in the bottom there that's only co2 um, and I gave a squirt into the top here so this should be I mean it's not a closed transfer but it's close enough <laughs> right back when we're done so that is because I know um, that a corny keg weighs 4.2, that is 17 point, well say 17 and a half litres that we've got in there, which is all right. It's a bit disappointing, but it's all right. I'll just show you what's left in the fermenter, um, apart from the uh, float hydrometer. This is not trub, this is hop. Uh, matter so I could probably if I filtered that I could probably get another half litre but do you know what I don't need it that much that is where the Mac Daddy filter does come in I think because it's not really filtering trub let's have a look at what's in the Mac Daddy one of those one handed things again I should be used to this by now <laughs> Fuck it, should I just edit this out? No, I won't, because then you'll see what a twat I am. See, that is all hop matter now that that's pulled out. It's done a really f excellent job, I think. Um, this is the finest mesh filter for the Mac Daddy filter. And, uh, yeah, so that's all the hot matter that it pulled out. I could possibly, maybe, have uh, have filtered a, a fair amount more, but I didn't want to run the risk of spoiling it because this is um, this is one of those fairly complex brews that I think it's not just about quantity, right? Because I'm really anal about stuff like this, I decided to pour what was in that fermenter into my measuring jug. And I don't really think I could have salvaged much more. Uh, so I've kegged it, I've put it in a keezer, but what I'm going to do 
is uh, got the canning seamer out. It's only a single seamer, but I get a reasonable success rate out of it. Uh, so I'm going to can four bottles, uh, four cans, four bottles, four four forty cans uh, before it's all carbonized, dated. <laughs> Fucking hell! I haven't been drinking yet either. Do you know that I'm? not had a drink tonight um, so before it's carbonated um, I'm going to pop it in a can along with um, a little bit of priming sugar or use some of those little I've got some of those priming things left over uh, seam it up stick it somewhere warm let it condition then I'll take one can at random if that's all right um, I'll then try and send another can over to in America and I've got two spare for a couple of other people that I have in mind I'm not expecting this to be a perfect heady topper clone I have to be frank um, but I don't think it's gonna be a million miles off judging from what the little tweaks I made uh, someone's suggestion which I can't talk about <laughs> That sounds really elitist and wank, doesn't it? I'm sorry about that, but I did promise that I wouldn't say. Right, let's get these filled, and then I'm going to pour a little glass and have my first proper little tasty poos. Four cans canned. Quick flush with CO2. Top them up to the brim. Drop a carbonation drop in each one. Might be a little bit too much, but it's not going to hurt. Uh, then once they've warmed up a little bit because I took it from I actually kegged it from one degree it's gone into the keyser which is 5.9 so it's still got a bit of warming up to do um, there's a little bit of give in the cans which I'd have expected because there's no pressure in there this is now I've only ever tried Heady Topper once <laughs> and lucky I was very very grateful too it sort of looks like a bit like the right colour I'm gonna give it now bear it in mind it's only just gone straight in the um, straight in the keg there's not a huge amount on the nose but it is still remarkably cold let's see what it tastes like do you know crumbs when that's carved I think that's a very very close Goodness me, um, I'm a bit speechless actually. Crikey, I'm not going to force carb that, I'm going to let it carb up gradually. But that, that is, that is not a million miles away from what I remember Heady Topper tasting like goodness <laughs> I think I think I might actually be getting getting things right for a change anyway what I'm gonna be finishing tonight on is uh, the flower childish after Will sent some lovely flower child over for me to test against my own and my own's not a million miles off so pleased am I let's see what this is like we'll come back in a couple of weeks after it's given a chance to carb up um, and give these a chance just to uh, just to condition and we'll see right back in a couple of weeks oh I don't know when you do these long or when I do these long over a period of time videos I'm not sure what I've said before anyway I don't know if I introduced this particular project 
it's irrelevant. The story so far. About a year and a bit ago, a friend of mine sent me a can of beer from America. Obviously, um, as a uh, yeast sample, because it's illegal to send beer from America. So it was sent as a yeast sample. And it's from uh, from a little a little brewery called the Alchemist, and the beer was called Heady Topper. And I have to say, I mean, Heady Topper is generally regarded as being amongst the world's top ten beers, and rightfully so as well. It was beautiful, earthy, grassy florally powerful beautiful balanced everything about it was just don't take my word for it just read some of the reviews and yeah i was very grateful <laughs> exceptionally grateful and um i can't actually say who but it's someone associated <laughs> very closely with the alchemist um and i've i've had to i've had to promise not to mention <laughs> although there's nothing there's, there's nothing naughty or anything about this it's not stolen or anything i've had to not say um who sent me the actual recipe it's not necessarily the recipe but more the tweaks um but it is almost the recipe is almost freely available in a couple of online books and forums it's the tweaks i think so this, I only kegged it two days ago. I wasn't going to force carb it. I've just decided I'm going to force carb it. Um, I only, so I've cranked it up to 45 degrees earlier today. So it's not carbed. So there's no real head or head retention. But I just need to taste it just to, just to round this video off a little bit. So here we go. Oh, stand back for the money shot. And that's about as close as I think it's possible to get to the heady topper. Um, so anyway, um, thank you. <laughs> the person who knows who that person is, there's there's nothing, no one's going to get into trouble. But I would like to say I'm very grateful. And um, I... I truly respect everything that you do not just making beer but the, you know the, the way that you're aligning your brewery with just everything that is good um, for the planet and your community and everything and this for me now I um, crumbs what can you say so right I'm gonna wind this video up now because I think this is probably gonna be one of the longest brew to glass videos that I've done it's not fully carved it's not carbonated the color I think is almost cock on for heady topper um, very very much uh, impressed with with being able to to brew this so thank you ever so much I um, would encourage everybody just to play because Brewing's not just about the beer, it's about who we are and what we leave behind in order to make this planet a slightly better place for everybody. So, thank you and cheers.